system we need to do to ensure an adequate, adequate and trained workforce. You seem to have led us into that <coughs> topic. Um, does anyone, would anyone would you want to comment? Yes, I, I have a comment. Uh, um, I think um, we, we are like this um, IT sector, which is very strong for us, and, and uh, does the, also this, uh, everybody knows about the Skypes and uh, Symantex that we have here, and the NATO cyber centers, and, and uh, we, um, we, but to have more people on, in that sector, we need uh, uh, to change the attitude, not in the university level, but already from the first grade, that. Um, for example, I, I remember when I was a small kid, my, my mother used to tell me that uh, okay, this math, this logarithm and, and derivatives, you don't need them in the future really. But, but if uh, we have at home such, a, such an attitude towards that maths, for example, then how can we come to, um, to university level students uh, who, who are um, ready to study that? and, and uh, bring uh, new innovation and technology development. Um, I'll follow up on that. Um, I mean, Estonia has successfully branded itself as Estonia as a high-tech uh, country. However, it has been a challenge for firms coming here um, for IT-related firms to, to find personnel. Uh, the labor market in that area is actually very, very tight, although unemployment remains high in other sectors. Um, and so that should be a focus, I would think, for the Estonian government now, for Estonian now, and also um, the, 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 the long term as well. What about bringing in foreign talent to fill in some of these gaps? Do you think that's a, is that a good option? And how can we do it if, given the current situation now, where um, companies are often reluctant to bring people in for various reasons, um, and it's still quite a small economy. Um, do you want to, you want to speak to that? I could give it a couple of words. Um, mm. uh, it's, um, it's an option and it's a kind of a reality for universities because when we built the university system we had uh, uh, twice more uh, possible students than the demographic situation will allow us uh, in, uh, in uh, three years time. Meaning that whether we should close down some of them or uh, uh, start to consider how to keep uh, the capacity. And uh, universities are actually uh, very actively seeking uh, the ways and kind of a, uh, value propositions. Uh, uh, why should some foreign uh, student come here? And in, uh, in some areas, for example in ICT, there are successes uh, already. There are a couple of um, master's level programs which are very uh, attracted quite a lot of uh, foreign interest and uh, to boost this uh, ICT uh, area because uh, like you also mentioned uh, this is somehow controversial that we have a very good uh, IT image in the world and uh, from other hand we lack the, uh, the specialists, the professionals uh, available in the market and to boost this uh, higher education issue uh, Estonian Development Fund actually initiated the uh, IT Academy project, uh, where, which is currently also in a coalition agreement, and which the aim is to give a boost to ICT higher education and to really put it in the map in this Nordic IT area, education area. We've just come to the end of our allotted time. Do, should we wrap it up here? Or would it would we have question? Would we have time for a question? I see the gentleman has a question over here. Yes, sorry. Um, we hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we hear a lot about technology uh, as a driver for innovation and investment in the economy. What about the role of the more traditional areas, such as farming? We've talked about rural unemployment. Um, how do you see membership of the EU and the development of farming in the economy in the future in Estonia? Uh, uh, we all know the condition of Estonian agriculture and you know in, <coughs> in history uh, we had a very big market just next to us. It was the Russian market 
For example, in Tartu, in uh, small gardens, people would grow salad or tomatoes and cucumbers and sell them all in the St. Petersburg market and they built houses on them from that money. But um, this, is, this is in some sense a political question, of course. I'm quite sure that Russia could eat anything we produce in the agricultural sector. I'm quite sure about that, but there are political barriers and there are challenges, there are choices. And uh, that concerns other sides of economy too, investments also. So, uh, so this is the problem. And, um, and to start from zero in the country, it's, it's quite hard. It's the same thing, it's a question of investments. Somebody should come, invest, create a little larger farms when there is some market for such products in the EU, for example, perhaps also. But, uh, but Russia is not a challenge just now. It's, it's a pity, but it's that way. So, only question on investments again. I'd actually like to go back to your previous question about uh, attracting um, international uh, workers to come here, um, or international businesses. Um, I think we're sitting in uh, a place in, uh, the, that could actually help in terms of bringing in international investment. If you want to bring in highly skilled labor, um, they have families, um, and they want their children to have access to international education, oftentimes in English. And the ISC is a prime example of that, and I think that the ISC, the school can be used as a selling point um, for Estonia as you're, um, as you're going overseas and trying to bring in investment in high school labor. Other questions from the audience? <coughs> um, we've been talking about education and um, the education system in Estonia um, and being an international educator. Um, but my daughter is at an Estonian school. Um, I see the difference between the two systems of education. Um, and um, I just wonder um, how uh, will Estonian teachers feel um, about change in the educational system? Um, uh, for example, um, you know, we teachers are at school uh, every day from 8.15 and often don't leave till 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, and I know in Estonian schools this is different if the teachers don't have lessons, they're not in school and things like that. How do you think that the Estonian teachers would take to a more international type of education where um, the teachers are more available for the students during the day? I, I think we need a new generation of teachers. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> that alone doesn't help probably because they still come from the same university where, uh, and from the same curriculums where uh, uh, TKs ago. So some other things should be brought But they are more open minded now. As a generation, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but actually it's a kind of a paradox that uh, if we compare uh, Estonian students' Google's results in PISA tests, uh, then we score very high. But uh, when you question the satisfaction uh, of pupils or, or, or teachers, then it's uh, very low. So it's a kind of a uh, gap in between. Uh, but. Uh, <coughs> But I, I, I wouldn't be so uh, uh, pessimistic about the improvements, possibilities, or the, uh, or the teachers' uh, kind of request for, uh, for uh, innovative solutions and uh, new, new methods.